Hey guys. Hey guys, today we're Hey guys, today we're Hey guys, today we're going to watch a bit a video. Subscribe. You need to strut your stuff. We'll show you where to upload and share your videos for the world to see coming up right after this break. Stay here. Hi YouTube. This is Chad and Steve. We're the co-founders of the site. It's for free and have been able to do a bunch of different things with them. YouTube.com is the best place that I've seen. <clears throat> Want to know more about Wait, YouTube. blame it on George oh, and Wendigoon? Oh, yeah. Mama Max? Barely sociable? Next po? Disturbing? Hold it! Wait, this is the this is the biggest scary video people collab in the world. <laughs> the dark side of YouTube. A place that has become an obsession of mine throughout the years. With the vast majority of my uploads being centered around the most disturbed content. Yeah, guest starring me. Offer. Guest starring me. I'm involved. I, I did this. And throughout these years, I made this I've video. accumulated so many topics ranging from the bizarre to the downright terrifying that I decided to finally put them all together into an iceberg so that I can properly share them with all of you. Most of these will be unique to my channel, but you'll probably recognize a few topics, especially if you've watched my videos before. And in honor of the spooky season, I reached out to a few fellow creators to help me out in taking you guys to the very depths of this site. So without further ado, join me as we journey down YouTube's darkest And you weren't iceberg. invited? Chat, I'm not relevant enough to be invited to cool stuff like this, okay? Plus, I don't really make content Level like one, this anyway. Clear skies. For this layer, I'll be taking you guys through some of the videos and channels that truly terrified me when I was growing up, way before I ever dreamed of becoming a YouTuber. And from there, I'll have some friends join me in walking you through the following levels, which, rather than being ranked by obscurity, will instead get darker and darker as we go. At like least me. in my own personal opinion. That's what I until do! Until the very end, when I'll close the video off with the content here on YouTube that truly terrifies me today, which I consider to be the darkest on the entire platform. The Real Screams of Hell. We think you're cool. This classic Thanks. video from Thanks, 2011 Mom. reportedly shares an audio clip from a Soviet experiment in which a team of researchers drilled a hole as far as they could into the surface of the Earth. However, upon reaching 14.4 kilometers, the drill suddenly broke through into what seemed to be a large pocket of open space and air. Immediately, the temperature at the site of the drill tip rose to a staggering 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but that was far from the most unusual discovery, as immediately the scientists began to hear the faint sound of screaming emanating from the small opening in the earth. Hell? So curiously, they lowered a heat-resistant microphone into the hole, and this is what they recorded. And uh, I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. We found Ohio! <laughs> According to the Holy video, shit. this audio shows the persistent screaming from those trapped in hell. And though certainly very creepy, the video is really nothing more than a fabrication inspired by a hoax of a similar manner. Interestingly though, the Soviets did actually perform a similar experiment in which they drilled 12 miles below the Earth's crust, but nothing supernatural was ever recorded. Marina <coughs> Mortegard Glesgorv this entry was actually my first encounter Dude, with a YouTube Walmart mystery back Black when Friday. I was probably around 11 years old. And needless to say, it led to countless sleepless nights. The story revolves around a 20 second video posted to YouTube that showed a man sitting and staring expressionless into the camera before the shot suddenly cuts to a man smiling nefariously for the final two seconds. Bruh. Aside from being slightly off-putting, the supposed full version of this video is said to be cursed and have horrific effects on whoever views it. It According made me want to die, this is only Chad, part I want to die. Video. The full video lasts two minutes and was removed by YouTube after 153 people who viewed the video. Oh, dude, I've heard of these videos. It's like it's like Suicide Mouse. You guys are when I saw that when I was younger, and it scared me. 
kid is like, if you watch this video, you're going to end up shooting yourself. Watch out. Those type of like videos, dude, when you're young, those shit, that shit's scary. Gouge their eyes out and mailed them to YouTube's main office in San Bruno. The video <laughs> itself was only viewed by one YouTube staff member who started screaming after 45 seconds. The man is under constant sedatives and is apparently unable to recall what he saw. The other people who were in the <laughs> room with him said all they could hear was a high-pitched drilling noise, but none of them dared to look at the screen. Supposed videos of this full version so is have he found saying their way to YouTube over the years. That he basically just are cursed quite us. Creepy. It's not hard to tell that this is just another internet myth. They even went on to identify who this man actually was. Though I wish someone would have told that to 11-year-old me. Yeah, I can Levitating imagine girl this 11 year olds. While on a walk in an unnamed oh, forest I've seen in this. Russia, a man's dog suddenly bolts off, uncharacteristically running away from its owner I've and seen this to video. listen to his commands. And upon chasing him deeper into the woods, the owner comes face to face with a bizarre scene. Tarzan, come here. Yeah. In front of him appeared to be a young girl levitating in the air next to it's her real. mother. And upon the cameraman's dog barking, the child comes back down to the ground and runs off, disappearing into the woods. It's Vecna. This is another one of those videos that always gave me the creeps back in the day. And watching it back today, it's definitely still a bit scary. But realistically, it's probably nothing more than a hoax. It's real. Marina Joyce. This entry oh. refers to one of the Dude, more bizarre I remember moments all in this. history. I, I made As videos on this shit. As began swirling back in 2016, that popular YouTuber Marina Joyce <clears throat> had been kidnapped and was being forced to make videos. The concern arose as the 19-year-old creator, who was typically bubbly and full of life, began acting differently. In her videos, she seemed to be incredibly nervous, with her eyes constantly shifting off camera, as if someone was directing her on what to do. In one instance, you could even see a finger of someone behind the scenes pointing yeah, to where she should stand. This. And the bizarre moments continued from there, as viewers Why don't you make an, an iceberg of... like this? Hmm. Probably because someone already did. And uh, I don't really do quote unquote disturbing stuff necessarily. That's that's like their thing. I do I do I do movie reviews. All right. That's why I did like Nickelodeon, Disney, and and child shows. Cause it, cause it has to do with what I do, you know. I, I have to make, I, I always have to make sure I make something that has to do with what I do. Bruises on her arms, a moment where she appears to whisper, "Help me," and a gun in the background of one of her videos. During the time, the internet was fixated on this case, which eventually led to the police doing a wellness check on the girl, who clarified that she was safe and she supposedly wasn't actually kidnapped. Marina eventually explained that her change in personality was simply due to her escalating depression, though to this day, many believe that she staged the whole ordeal. Yeah, I would see that. Angel I think she did. This video was the very first scary video that I ever saw on YouTube, when my friend showed it to me in his basement all the way back in 2008. And honestly, it left me traumatized and sleepless for weeks. Taken by the angel of death. This day. The video, which I sadly can't show due to age restriction, shows a soccer match in which a player by the name of Abdulrahman al Shuaibi is accidentally kicked in the head by an opponent. And following this, something extremely disturbing happens to him. First, he repeatedly falls to the ground and then springs to his feet in a shockingly unnatural manner. And once he finally finds his footing, he begins jogging backwards, as if he had no control over his body. He finally comes to a stop as he falls to his knees, and his body bends back in the most chilling way possible, <clears throat> to which he then falls completely limp to the ground, landing face first and supposedly dying right there on the field. This video is actually very real? real and is incredibly shocking to watch, but thankfully, al Shuabi would not actually lose his life. Instead, he suffered from a major seizure as a result of the kick to the head, causing his movements to become completely involuntary. But he would quickly go on to make a full recovery and would dude, actually- his, Dude, his brain went into autopilot mode right there. He got kicked so hard, he literally just started autopiloting. He'd play in the team's very next match. CERN Sacrifice. This video taken outside the CERN Geneva campus shows a group of hooded men accompanied by one woman gathering beneath a large statue of the Hindu god Shiva. The men then surround the woman who lies on the ground in the middle as one man approaches her with a knife <coughs> and proceeds to stab her, much to the shock of the person recording the ordeal. Fuck. Shit. <gasps> 
But unsurprisingly, this video too was later proven to be a hoax, with CERN later admitting- That was very good acting though. <sighs> and that some of their scientists Shit. had been the ones to carry out Fuck. the prank while they were attending the campus. Blank room suit. He would. He just got really horny all of a sudden. Creepy video in oh, fuck! History. This strange clip shows a man. Oh, I remember this. A bowl of soup in an all-white room. I remember this. A strange this. figure in a horrifying costume then approaches the man from behind and begins to console him before another figure appears in frame. The two then rub the man's back as he begins to cry. It, While it, off camera, isn't the thing that he's the eating his like laughing. parents or some shit? This is a classic right here. The origin of this video today still seems to be a mystery, but the costumes themselves were found to have been invented by an artist named Raymond Percy, who is best known for his work on Wreck-It Ralph and Zootopia. To this day, he denies any involvement and claims that the costumes were stolen and used for God knows what. However, it does seem more likely that this is just some kind of art project to which Percy was involved with at least in some capacity. It was bones, I but think? because he has never fully confessed it to it, prank. for now we can only make assumptions. Lost well, in the catacombs. Yeah, fr from what I heard about that video, is he was either eating his wife or his parents. I forget. That was like the bit. That was like the thing that everyone this said. Entry, oh, he's eating his parents. This entry, tape supposedly discovered kind of like, the kind of like catacombs from South Park. Urban Explorer. On it, the footage shows a man casually filming their journey into the claustrophobic maze of death before their behavior starts to change. For unknown reasons, the man begins to panic and starts to sprint through the dark catacombs before <clears> dropping <throat> his camera in a puddle and running off into the darkness, never to return. If this clip is real, it's very likely that whoever was behind the camera suffered from some sort of anxiety attack due to the claustrophobic and just overall terrifying nature of the catacombs. Those strange symbols and unexplained noises in the background have led others to point to more supernatural explanations. Either way, if it is Get to longer. be believed, it's likely whoever this man was did not survive the trip. However, most people nowadays believe that this was nothing more than a hoax, potentially put on by an old TV show called Scary But True, where the footage was first aired. And though this is most likely the case, it's interesting to note that the footage does actually show the inside of the catacombs, meaning that if they really did fake this clip, then they definitely went all out for it. Dude, I'm jealous of Before people who don't get down scared. Iceberg, I have to first bring up something that is truly haunting. Body odor. That is why I highly recommend oh, today's yeah. sponsor, Dr. Squatch. Oh, for, Dr. You Squatch got a sponsor offers by all Squatch? natural soap steel. Dude, no joke. I use Squatch all the time. Because I got sponsored by them one time. I've been using it ever since, no joke. They kind of they're kind of awesome. Wait, where's his code at? Doc DSQ Crowley. $20 or more by using my code DSQ Crowley. Just click the link in the description below and enjoy yeah, like your shame. savings. And to be fair. Normally, like, if I'm just in, like, a dark place where they say it's haunted, I normally am not scared. Um, but if it's, like, a decrepit, abandoned fucking factory or, or castle, yeah, I, I'd be a little bit scared. Or like, a prison. But if it's just, like, a regular house or, like, a mansion or something, and it's supposedly haunted, I, I probably wouldn't get that scared. Sense. My wife would, though. Oh, boy. They're going to Waverly Hills next week? Good luck. Catch all the evidence possible. Tier two. Bizarre Tip fetishes? Of the iceberg. Dude, someone found out about my foot fetish. Is that what this is about? Is that what this is about? God damn it. 00390. 00390 refers to a YouTube channel that has been active for over half a decade and continues to post to this day. There are many disturbing videos on this YouTube channel that point to its creator seemingly being some sort of kidnapper and potentially even a serial killer. Though in reality, this doesn't appear to be true. Rather, 00390 seems to be instead an ARG, as some of its most they infamous know my secret, videos were chat. actually taken from <clears throat> completely separate sources. And overall, it seems to be more of an art project than anything. But at the end of the day, we really don't know for sure what its origins are. Blood Soup, mm. Svartsapa, 1995. Mm. 
blood soup. Svartsapa 1995 is a low-res six-minute YouTube video with less than a thousand views. Are these all just going to be fake art projects? Chat, we're only in tier two, all right? We the got time. video begins with what seems to be a sketchy blood drive taking place in an unknown location, where all of the blood collected is put into one big pot. The ingredients for a dish known as Svartsapa are then flashed on the screen, which include the word blood. The Swedish word for blood. Bark we then Sapa? see the blood taken from the participants mixed in a bowl with the rest of the recipe to create what is essentially human blood soup. Mm. The camera then cuts to a scene within a pub where the soup is being served and then eaten by a table full of people. While it's quite uncomfortable to watch and leaves us with many questions, the video is actually nothing more than an art project carried out by a man named Pelé Torsen. Oh, is it an art project? That doesn't mean that it wasn't all fake, as part of this performance actually did entail eating the actual soup, which is more disgusting than anything else. Mm. I mean, don't knock it till you New try it. DPRK. I mean, it's just blood, New right? DPRK it's not like you're eating is people. A channel that was created back in 2009. Is drinking blood That's cannibalism, chat? Come on. Yeah, I, I, you, yeah, I'd probably say that. Yeah, supposedly that, yeah. shows what life. It's is like, like milking a cow. Okay, no, that's like now in North Korea. Each video paints the country as a utopia filled with happy citizens and a thriving economy, which is quite the contrast to what most of us know about the region, and that's entirely by design. As, in actuality, the channel was quite literally created by the North Korean government. Oh, I've heard of this. This entire page was set up as a way to spread propaganda to the rest of the world. A facade to mask Cannibalism the true light. conditions of the country, <clears throat> whose citizens are subjected to an incredibly harsh existence. And overall, it's very off-putting seeing how normal some of these videos are despite how dark their reality is behind the scenes. Yeah. Bizarre fetishes. Damn it! This is a strange one. YouTube is an extremely diverse platform that is home to all sorts of niche communities. They found out about my FNAF fart fetish, man. Most are fairly normal, but the deeper you dig, the stranger and darker they seem to become. For example, take a look at this YouTube channel called Amputees. All of its videos are uploaded of people who have had amputations, along with a favorites playlist, all containing dozens of other clips showing similar content. I've heard Even of that before. more unusual, many of these clips have hundreds of thousands of views on them, leading to the question, why? Well, this is actually an account that seems to be dedicated to some sort of amputee fetish, with a select group of people consuming this material in a sexual way. And though there's nothing wrong with finding someone with an amputation attractive, this fetish seems to go a Yo, get me a girl with one leg. <laughs> yo, what yo, what do you find attractive in a girl? You know, breathing, uh, one leg. What, what do you mean? Well, I mean, I, they can't have two. If they have two legs, I'm out. Right? I'm not I'm not about that life. A bit deeper than that. As on this page are videos of actual amputation surgeries, which are also being viewed sexually. Ew! Kanye West Suicide Song The Kanye West <laughs> Suicide Song alludes to a leaked track by Kanye Wait, called what? Never so Seen- what is he? What is he bleeping? ...surgeries, which are also being viewed sexually. Kanye West Suicide Oh, song. okay. The Kanye West Suicide Song alludes to a leaked track by Kanye called Never See Me Again. The song features a sample of Futari Dake No Ceremony by Yukiko Okada, a Japanese singer who committed suicide in the 80s at the age of 21, who Kanye had been studying, even going as far as moving to Japan where he would write this song. And to go along with this dark sample, Kanye's lyricism seems downtrodden and almost defeated, repeating the lines, it'll be a long time before you ever see me again. Adding to the story, this came during a time in Kanye's life where his mental health had supposedly reached a breaking point. I mean, look at him now, Chad. to be the lowest time of his life. 
And given the lyrics, the sample, and the context within his own personal life, it's believed that this song was ultimately meant to be a suicide note, which he would release directly before taking his life. Thankfully, this would never happen. However, the song itself would leak to YouTube years later, where it is now referred to as his suicide song, as his lyrics seem to confirm his intentions. Monkey Hate We okay, this mentioned wrong. the bizarre fetish monkeys, rabbit hole right? that certain YouTube channels and playlists can lead you down. But one of the most baffling and disturbing examples of this is without a doubt the trend of monkey hate on YouTube. There are count- Do people just go to videos of monkey? God, I, I hate this monkey. This monkey, this monkey in this video? Oh, I hate it. Oh God, it makes me so angry just looking at this monkey. That's just, I know that's probably not what it's going to be, but that's just what I imagine. <laughs> just like people, their fetish is just going to monkey videos, like cute monkey videos. It's like, oh, stupid freaking monkey. I Those hate them. Videos and I hate them. Dedicated to this unusual trend. But essentially, the content typically shows a monkey or multiple monkeys being tortured in various ways. Oh! And though that is sickening enough, the comments are truly what make it horrifying. As users glorify this treatment as saying things like, ha 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 ha, it's getting everything it deserves. Oh! Or, give it to me. I'll give it a good home. Oh! Why this type of content is popular and Why? the comments it does is not fully understood, but theories range from it being another sort of twisted fetish to it being coded racism. Either way, it truly accounts for one of the darkest sections on all Ew. of YouTube. Much like oh, Monkey Hate, well, I know this, this entry deals with a similarly depraved form of animal abuse. I've heard of this Though before. this has been documented frequently across Nick's channel and will be further highlighted in a video coming later this year. So, for the sake of brevity, I won't go deeper into this. Taunting Terminally Ill Girl Sometimes, people will be evil for seemingly no good reason. Dude, YouTube comments, man, they're, they're evil. Just YouTube comments in general. ...as one of the most inexplicably mean-spirited <clears throat> events ever documented on the web. Kathleen Edwards was a girl who had fallen terminally ill about a decade ago with the same disease, Huntington's, that took the life of her mother at age 24. But whereas nothing seems more deserving of sympathy than a terminally ill child, not everyone viewed the situation in the same manner. And their neighbor, Jennifer Petcove, was instead actively rooting for the death of the child. The neighbor? stemming from her kid not being invited to a party at Kathleen's grandmother's house. Petcove went on a tirade, first posting a disturbing image of the Grim Reaper holding Kathleen's dead mother to the web. Then she posted a skull and crossbones on Facebook, but instead of a regular skull, it was Kathleen's face. What and the Kathleen's fuck? Kathleen's grandmother even said that there was an incident in which Pet Cub stood on her front porch and yelled when Kathleen was outside, I wish that that kid would hurry up and die with the lady going as far as to deck their vehicle out as a hearse. Her dispute features a hearse hauling a coffin. Kathleen's family and neighbors say it's been used to harass Kathleen and her mom before her death. And seeing an interview with her and her lawyer, it seems like there is absolutely no remorse. Have you learned a lesson? Yes. And that is? To keep my opinions and my views to myself. In the years since, wow. it appears that Kathleen Edwards has sadly passed away from her condition, meaning some of the precious <clears throat> final years of her life were unfortunately spent dealing with this unnecessary. For what reason? Because she didn't get invited. Her kid didn't get invited to a birthday party. Harrison O'Kenny rescue footage. Harrison O'Kenny was a cook aboard the Jascone Four, a Nigerian tugboat, when he experienced. Oh, what would be best I've seen this video. Yeah, as a real-life nightmare. While getting ready at 5 a.m. in the ship's bathroom, a giant wave struck the ship, tearing a hole in the hull and causing the vessel to sink beneath the water. Ten yeah, of the this. 12 crew members <clears throat> on that ship were killed, but O'Kenny had miraculously survived with the only problem being that he was trapped in the ship's bathroom and the ship was sinking quickly. Unable to escape, the man accepted his fate. 
before something miraculous happened. A small air bubble had formed in the ship's bathroom where Harrison just so happened to be. And despite the ship now being at the bottom of the ocean, Harrison was still able to breathe. This went on for an astonishing 60 hours when he was finally discovered by a rescue crew that was only coming to the ship to identify and collect bodies. Okay. All right. Jeez, yeah. That's so, oh man. With the rescue I can't being imagine. caught on camera and later uploaded to YouTube, you can see the shock in O'Kinney's eyes. A man who must have all but given up hope while waiting for the oxygen in the air bubble to run out. O'Kinney went on to survive and eventually be released from the hospital to live a normal life, though he has sworn to never go out to sea again. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> Dude, I feel I feel like that's like one of the scariest things to happen though, because you probably just assume you're gonna die. Because at least the other guys died of like maybe drowning or, or something else where it was kind of quick. You know, they didn't really like they were just, you know, a few minutes and they're gone. But he was stuck there for sixty hours and running out of oxygen. Random that's, that's acts of why violence. I'm scared of the freaking this ocean. This entry man. refers to the numerous clips across YouTube depicting, well, random acts of violence. The most well known example of this came back in 2017 when a video would be shared across the site showing a jogger pushing a woman in front of a bus. Luckily, oh, the woman I remember that. Death as the bus swerved at the last possible second. But the video remains as a reminder of how cruel people can be, as the shove was done completely at random, and the man This is why I hate people, Chad. went out of his way to try and essentially end this woman's life, for no apparent reason. The popularity of the video led to a worldwide search to try and determine the identity of this man, but frustratingly, he has remained anonymous. Though this is by far the most popular example, it's sadly far from the only example. Like this video, which shows a woman in her mid-50s planting flowers along a sidewalk in Seattle. And I've though her seen actions were incredibly innocent yep. and wholesome, a young man walking by would approach her from behind and kick her directly in the face, yeah. leaving the woman badly injured. This man was thankfully caught and identified as 19-year-old Isaiah Clay Lewis, who had a history of domestic abuse as well as other assault charges. Thankfully, it appears that he is still in prison, awaiting his trial. Man dies standing up. This strange video was shot at a mall in Kazakhstan, where a group of people crowd around a man who appears completely frozen in an upright position. For the video's runtime, the crowd never successfully gets the man to move, and chillingly, when the medics went to pick him up, his body was completely stiff. The title of this video suggests that this man had somehow died standing up. And looking at the video, it's easy to see why, as not once does the man move. But in reality, something even stranger happened. It was said that the man had spent the entire day binge drinking when his body suffered an incredibly rare symptom called alcoholic stupor. This is the final stage of alcohol intoxication before coma, and occurs when the blood alcohol content level is nearly 0.40. For reference, Holy you're considered shit. drunk when you're at 0.08. This causes the person to lose motor function, and stops them from responding to any stimuli around them. In this instance, it led to the man essentially freezing in place, apparently for well over an hour. Luckily, Holy medics shit. were able to pump the man's stomach, and he would go on to make a full recovery. Though, this video remains chilling nonetheless, as there's something so unnatural and off-putting about a man stuck in time, likely one drink away from death. Yeah, the system reboot, Rabies that's pretty much humans. what was happening. When we think of rabies, we typically oh, think this, about wild animals. This is the video of the guy trying like to drink water. Right? But sadly, humans are susceptible to this terrifying disease as well. It first causes flu-like symptoms because it makes you afraid of water. Into agitation, Not afraid. confusion, and aggression. But like you can't drink water. As things progress, humans begin to hallucinate and suffer from hydrophobia or the fear of water. This disease is devastating and virtually 100% fatal after the first symptoms emerge. Luckily, we now have an effective vaccine against rabies, but videos exist of a time before a preventative treatment was available that show these haunting effects on camera. Some of the most disturbing include this child who had developed a fear of water, 
which likely led him to pass away due to dehydration. Flocka videos. Dude, Flocka, there, there was it, a video of like a dude, like it was a grown man just trying to drink water and he just couldn't get himself to do it. Is a synthetic drug that attempts to stimulate <laughs> the effects of cocaine and methamphetamine. And God for vaccine, dude. I know, right? Imagine actually getting a vaccine, though. Cringe, right? What you what you got the COVID vaccine? Cringe, man. What what what? You want them to put a microchip in your butthole? Yeah, I'm kind of confused on the IV fluid thing. Yeah. Price tag, but like many drugs. They can often take over a person and make them completely unlike themselves. Flocka is commonly referred to as the Waka zombie Flocka? drug, and the videos here on YouTube show us exactly why many call it that, as it makes these people look and act like legitimate zombies. These videos are extremely prevalent across the site, and they all serve as a warning to stay far away from Flocka. Russian dog experiments. Dude, uh, I don't understand how, uh, like, for example, fentanyl and that drug, why, you know? Like, everyone sees that it does terrible stuff, and it's probably extremely painful and awful. Well, let's try it, you know? Well, no, let's try it anyway. Uh, yes, this one is old but gold. This refers to a video created by Soviet scientist Sergei Brokoninko, a man best known for creating one of the first heart and lung machines. And though this invention has revolutionized the world of medicine, its roots are very dark. As during the testing phase, Sergei would use dogs to test his machine. The video shows the head of a dog, detached from its body. But with Sergei's machine, it's still alive. It's extremely disturbing. But experiments like this were very common back in the 50s and 60s, as on another occasion, scientists attached the head of a dog onto another healthy dog. The result was this. A dog with two heads, both of which were actually functioning. The dog would go on to survive for 38 days before it eventually perished. Making a real PC uh! gaming chair. At first glance, this video- Making a- wait, what? video appears relatively normal, as it betrays exactly what the title says. It shows a group visiting a junkyard and finding an old car, in which they remove the seat from and turn it into a gaming chair. However, looking a bit closer, you start to realize that the video is far stranger than it seems as when looking at the car's windshield, you can notice several bullet holes, a few of which enter the vehicle directly in front of the seat they chose. And to make it stranger, when the cameraman is showing off the seat, you can see what appears to be long, dried blood in the back, making it likely that someone had been shot and maybe even killed whilst sitting in that very seat. And strangest of all, no one in the video reacts to it at all, just adding to the unsettling atmosphere of the clip. Classic YouTuber video, man. This was the original name of a channel run by a young man who seemed to have an obsession with a number of girls. He okay. would find girls that caught his eye. Yeah. Uh, man. Average Reddit moderator. With a number of average Reddit user, 4chan user. Holy shit. <laughs> girls. He would find girls that caught his eye. Some were contestants on Wheel of Fortune, while others were childhood stars or even just random internet users. And then he would obsessively post about them <clears throat> on one of his many channels, as he's known to have at least 10 accounts. The videos are incredibly creepy, as this person Average simply Discord whispers mod. the name of these young women over and over again. In one particular clip, he even doxed one of the girls in the description, making it clear that he had been actively trying to locate her behind the scenes. BHFS Spanning a total of just 8 seconds, this video showcases what is likely the most devastating moment of a man's life. It shows a cluster of dead cattle and a man, who is lying with them in the background, thrashing and screaming at the top of his lungs. No words were spoken, and no context is given to the video, uh. but it's not hard to assume that the man wailing in the back was the owner of these animals, and their sudden death had broken him. 
Those cattle were clearly everything to him, and were likely one of the main things supporting him and potentially his family. Yet, in an instant, they were gone, for reasons unknown. I wish we knew more about what was really happening here, as the clip seems yeah. so reminiscent of the Lake Niles incident discussed previously on this channel. But ultimately, the man's reaction to all, all of them just fucking fell over and died? What the hell? Tells us all we really need to know about how devastating this video really is. El Chapo's son. El Chapo's son El, refers to a El. video posted by the New York Times. Okay, we've seen this video. body cam footage of the moment they discovered Ovidio Guzman Lopez. Th this is the video of like the leader of the, uh, uh, the son of Joaquin Guzman, better known as El Chapo. Lopez yeah. himself is a cartel leader. Cartel and his capture was said to be a long time coming, given the countless crimes he had committed. However, he was the leader of the cartel, and then when they arrested him, every single a cop that arrested this guy, they their followers came and just like murdered the shit out a of him. A few days after his arrest, the Mexican government <laughs> would order his release when a Sinaloa cartel took over much of the city. In the days after this video was filmed, virtually every officer shown in the footage would be hunted down and killed by the cartel they had been trying to stop. Pastor Bit by Snake Pastor Bit by Snake refers to a video depicting a ritual performed by Cody Coots, a pastor at the Full Gospel Tabernacle Church. Located in Kentucky, is known in particular for their rituals, which involve drinking poisons and handling venomous snakes to prove your devotion to God. Yes, very yeah. normal. Very in the normal. video, we see Cody delivering a sermon in 2018 with confidence, before the snake abruptly bites him. He continues to deliver the sermon, but quickly becomes so weak that he had to be carried out of the church and rushed to the hospital. He would survive, but only after 10 days in the ICU, meaning that this bite left him within inches of his life. But why? <laughs> what? Y'all want to worship God? Get bit by this snake? Perhaps hell, the strangest uh, hell part yeah. of all this is the fact that his father, Hallelujah. Jamie Coots, had sustained a venomous snake bite during this exact type of ritual back in 2013. Like his son, Jamie had been holding the snake too closely, prompting it to sink its venomous fangs into him. However, unlike his son, Jamie would not survive the ordeal as he passed away soon after. Hiccup Girl Hiccup Girl refers to Jennifer Mee, a Floridian woman who became known in 2007 for her seemingly never-ending case of hiccups. In the video, she gives information on trying to stop it, how long it's been going on, etc. Abdominal pains, throat pain, back pain. It's unbelievable. The video itself is harmless. It's what happens after that gives it a hindsight case of sinister energy. In June 2007, Mee's popularity waned after she successfully cured her hiccups, but she gained more attention after it was reported that she ran away from home. From there, she reportedly began to rob people with partners Lament Newton and Leron Rayford. Why? This continued until 2010, in which she lured a man with the help of Newton and Rayford into a house before killing him. They apparently got $50 from the robbery and were soon after arrested. For Mee's $50? attempted to defend her by saying she had schizophrenia, evidencing her hiccups as a side effect. But this did not work, and she currently serves life in prison without parole. Today, watching this video, it's disturbing to see what such an innocent-seeming figure became over the course of three years. To go from hiccuping on the news to life without parole on the news. The fuck? Murder cured her hiccups, I guess? Alright. Here we go, chat. It's getting, it's gonna get creepier. Hello everybody, it's me, Wendigoon, and today I am so happy that the Nick Crowley invited me to talk to you all about level four of this iceberg. Now, I've been a fan of Nick Crowley forever. In fact, he was one of the main inspirations for me to start a channel. So for me to get to a point where I, a person who's never even seen an iceberg in real life, gets invited onto his channel is a really big deal. And Nick, it really does mean a lot. But enough with the sappy stuff. I know you all want to continue on with this iceberg. So I am happy to take you on the journey through Can you get creepier than wholesome Wendigoon? Yeah. Heaven's Gate Exit Statements Heaven's Gate Exit Statements refers to a two hour long video where members of the infamous Heaven's Gate cult gave their final statements before the group's mass suicide in March of 1997. Heaven's Gate believed a variety of things, 
But in the 90s, they became convinced that their bodies were merely containers or vehicles for consciousness and that upon death, they would be transferred into what they considered their next level bodies. If you use the analogy of a car, people may keep their cars for a long time before they finally wear out and they clunk out. Or some people, they say, well, you know, here's a newer model, it's much nicer. And this one, you know, doesn't quite perform the way I could, and I'd like to move into this new car. Let me get rid of the old one, get a new one. I mean, that's about all we're talking about. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not a big Shortly deal, after mass the filming, suicide. Every member shown in this video would take their own life by consuming a poisonous blend of applesauce or pudding before tying plastic bags to their heads and passing away in their beds. Wow. Our next entry is Albert Soap. Colts, Albert man. Soap was a 22-year-old <clears throat> YouTuber who posted a vast array of content across the site, but his most recent endeavor was producing and starring in fictional videos about Vikings. The videos portray a unique blend of comedy and genuinely emotional moments and featured an extremely high production value. But sadly, when shooting for the latest installment of his Viking series, tragedy would strike. In the summer of 2021, Albert would climb a tall cliff in the Italian Alps in oh. order to get the perfect scenic shot for his video. Oh, Near no. the top, Albert would start to lose his footing before eventually plummeting 656 feet to the ground oh. below, killing him instantly. It is also worth noting that some have claimed Albert actually recorded his fall with a few videos being found on YouTube claiming to show his final moments. But to this point, I don't think any of these have been confirmed, and out of respect, they won't be shown here. What's very interesting about That's this sad. To me is that this isn't the only situation of a YouTuber potentially recording their own death. And whenever I hear about a case like this, it's incredibly haunting to go back and watch everything that led up to it. And it's like whenever you're watching that person in those videos from the past, you know the eventual end that their story is going to lead to before the person in the video does. And there's something so temporally haunting about that. Uh, and it's absolutely a tragedy. She's Still Sleeping. She's Still Sleeping refers to a video of the same title in which YouTuber Timothy Birmingham records one of his typical morning vlogs. In it, he jokes that his wife is sleeping in later than usual, even briefly showing the room in which she was lying. He's dead. It's me, Timothy. She's still sleeping. He's While dead. While this seems she? sweet and innocent, the truth behind this video is much more tragic. It turns Whatever out that can... Timothy's wife had actually passed away in her sleep, hence why she appeared to be sleeping for so long. Oh, and he when didn't filming know? and even after uploading, Timothy hadn't realized that the love of his life was actually he dead. Didn't know. It's truly sad oh. to see a nice guy like Timothy go through something like this, especially publicly on YouTube. But it's satisfying oh. to know that he remained in good spirits and continues posting videos to this day. That's so in the sad. subsequent uploads that he had after this, he spoke about how having the YouTube audience and the comments there to help him through this experience, which he vlogged throughout, was a huge help to him. And he felt like this online family helped him cope That's with so the That's so sad, of man. So why initially a very shocking he and seemed like such a nice guy. tragic situation, there's also a little bit of light in that the fact he was able to share that moment with so many people led to so much care and attention being put towards him. That while not a happy ending, it's definitely better than it could have turned out. Up next is Colleen Ritzer CCTV. The Colleen Ritzer CCTV video refers to the disturbing Philip Kism trial, in which a 14-year-old student of the same name had raped and murdered his 24-year-old teacher, Colleen Ritzer, in a bathroom of the school. Following the incident, he would put 14? What the her in a garbage fuck? can and roll her out of the school into the woods nearby. Everything leading up to and immediately following this murder was chillingly caught on the Oh, okay, yeah, okay, I've seen this. School CCTV. Yeah, I've seen this. You can see Colleen happily walking to the bathroom, unaware of the fact that Philip had been following closely behind her. The footage also shows Philip wheeling out the garbage can that he put Colleen's body into oh as he walks God. out of frame heading towards the woods. Philip was eventually caught after Richard's body was discovered in the nearby forest, and he is currently serving a life sentence with 40 years parole eligibility. Cases like this provide an especially large amount of fear, at least for me, 
because whenever you're in the public sphere, you feel like that you're safe or at least seen. Never feel like, like you're safe in the public evil sphere. Can still happen even if under a watchful eye. And while the footage itself and what happened to Colleen Ritzer is absolutely abysmal, it is good that it was there as a means of putting <laughs> Philip behind bars for good. After that, we have the infamous RJ the Smoker. RJ the Smoker was a channel run by a man named RJ who would discuss a variety of smoking related topics as well as actually smoking and reviewing different types of cigarettes. His first upload, My First Smoking Vid, was posted on January 22nd of 2010 and would be followed by hundreds of other videos throughout the years. RJ seemed to have a passion for tobacco, smoking, and YouTube, but unfortunately this seemed to lead to his downfall. From his first video to October 2015, all seemed well until RJ posted a video titled Important Update. RJ presented himself to Whips Cross Hospital in East London. X-ray was done and what followed was a chain of events I could not even dream in my worst nightmares. In this video he describes his recent visit to the doctor and his lung cancer diagnosis. Even at this point, RJ looked like a shell of the I, person I mean, smoking in my first smoking video. Yeah. But from this moment on, RJ declined even further. During this time, he would shift his focus from solely smoking and begin a series documenting his journey with cancer. He remained active on the channel until- I mean, who would have thought? Am I right? Till November 4th of 2016, <clears throat> Chat, finally don't smoke. claimed his life. Don't this smoke. is especially chilling, not only because as I mentioned earlier, there are several cases of people chronicling their death on YouTube, however there are not many cases of people chronicling what led to it. And whenever you put the sum of all True. of it together, it's not only a tragic story, but also a sort of cautionary tale. Yeah, that's how Up my stepdad is. He's been a chain Chilino smoker. Sanchez. He still Chilino is. Chilino Sanchez refers to the popular like bronchitis singer, and like Chilino everything Sanchez, possible. who made a string of hits during his career in the 80s and early 90s. He's best known for creating Narco Corridos, a subgenre of Mexican folk music that deals with tales of the drug trade and cartel life. His final performance can be found on YouTube, where he's shown receiving a note on stage. Chilino uh, we've seen the this, contents chat. of the we've note seen for this. a moment with sweat beating down his forehead before he finally begins to sing. Hours after the concert, his body would be found blindfolded, tied up, and dumped by a river, two gunshots in the back of the head. I remember. It would later be revealed that the note Chilino was handed had come straight from the cartel, who viewed the songs he sang as a threat to their business. The letter was a threat, telling him that if he chose to perform that night, he would be killed, yet Chilino decided to sing anyway, despite knowing that it would cost him his life. All the ones I've covered up until this point are very sad and tragic stories. And this is also a sad and tragic story, but Cholino was a baller. Imagine that. You have True. spent all this time talking about the evils and the wickedness of the cartel, and one night they say, if you do this show, we're going to kill you, and you just start singing. Our next entry that is, is Diana Love Day. Diana Loveday refers to a former YouTube channel run by a woman of the same name. She would create meal tutorials along with short vlogs documenting her travels. Welcome to my kitchen, where I really like to cook, but I'm often short on time, so speed is the hook. The contents Good of the channel phrase. is Good completely phrase. harmless, however outside of YouTube, Loveday's story is far more sinister. <clears throat> in June of 2014, Loveday filed for divorce from her ex-husband, Greg Mulvillehill, after seven years of marriage. And while she was initially granted full custody of her children, Greg went on to file for joint custody, causing Loveday to launch a string of accusations in order to maintain full control of their kids. By the summer of 2016, the court would rule that Loveday had to share custody with Mulvillehill as well as pay him child support, causing a variety of changes in her life like selling her condo, among other things. But this is where it takes a strange turn. On the 4th of September of 2016, Greg received a phone call from a number he didn't recognize. The person on the line claimed to be a private investigator who had information on the custody battle that could help in his favor. Warily, Greg and his friend Jason Kovac went to the dirt path of Avadina Soldad. There, a man came out and That's shot suspicious. Greg in his torso before quickly fleeing the area. Thankfully, Greg would survive the attack as oh. the bullet had missed any vital organs and has oh, gone on shit. to make a full recovery. 
Soon after, it so was it discovered was, that none other than Diana Loveday masterminded the assassination attempt against her ex-husband in order to win back full custody of her children. She and co-conspirator and lover Weldon McDavid were found guilty in the court and are currently serving lengthy sentences. So this one I can have a bit more fun with because no one actually died. So my challenge to you, because the channel's still up, is to find a cooking video and then show your mom and midway through be like, hey, you know she tried to kill her husband? <laughs> and then let me, or more specifically, Nick know in the comments how that goes. Because this isn't my video, so I can sabotage this all I want. So thanks, Nick. Up next, we have Dolly, Dolly Flesh. Flesh. Dolly Flesh is the name of a claymation channel, whose work is nothing shy of disturbing. In these videos, scenes of murder and rape would be graphically depicted, and over time the content only got more and more disturbed and detailed. But it's not just the artwork that makes You know what, chat? I was, cause, uh, I'm planning on doing a claymation iceberg video. So, you know, that might be on there. This channel so twisted as it more so has to do with the creator behind it. The man's name is Leighton Allen Lebu, and in May of 2019, he would publish the video, One Kid, Three Hamsters, no. to the Dolly Flesh channel. No. Recently purchased some Please don't. Please don't tell me he's going to kill those hamsters. Hamsters from PetSmart. I got three of them. I haven't thought of names yet. I'm not so good with names because I can't keep up, think, like make up my mind when it comes to names. The clip shows Layton playing with three hamsters that had just recently been bought from the pet store. And though nothing of note is shown in the clip, the description provides a haunting clue of what Layton would do with these innocent animals as it read, pin, stabbed, drowned, microwaved. In the following days, a video would emerge across the web of Layden using those very tactics to torture each hamster, eventually killing them. The video received so much attention that Layden would actually be arrested for abusing the animals and he has yet to return to YouTube since. I'm decently familiar with this what case because a friend of fuck? mine, Tom, made an excellent video about this, which Shout out to that guy. But what was especially haunting to me about going through the accounts and everything associated with it is it initially started as these very graphic. It's a friend of his? Oh no. Fit claymation depictions between just two random claymation figures, but then he began incorporating himself into the fantasies. And then after that, he began to wear clay masks and then we see the violence go from the claymation figures to hamsters and the entire thing put together is like textbook dangerous serial killer behavior and considering that he will be out fairly early or at least in the next few years if i remember correctly this is a message to everyone be on the lookout for Leighton Labou wherever he turns up because my money is on the fact that he's not going to leave the internet or popularity for good wow Up next, we have Jating Min Til Hidar. I know I pronounced something wrong there, and I'm very sorry. Jating Min Til Hildar, which translates to My Confession to Hildar, is a video by a man named Gnar Runar Sigur Thorson, I'm so sorry, who was confessing his love to a woman named Hildur. He oh, believed no. that he and Hildur shared a special romantic connection, and he soon fell in love with her, with this oh, video no. being the first time he'd share his feelings openly. Hi. However, his love was misguided as Hildur had been happily married at the time to a man named Haynes Helgeson. Oh, this no. enraged Gnar, and looking to free Hildur of this relationship, he decided to visit Haynes late one night. He proceeded to sneak into the man's house before violently attacking and killing him in his sleep. But worst of all, due to a number of legal loopholes in Gnar's home country of Iceland, he's currently not even in prison. And as we speak, he's out there living as a- What? What the hell kind of loophole is that? Oh, you broke into his house and stabbed him? Oh yeah, there's a loophole that says if you break into their house at 3 a.m., between 3 a.m. to 4 a.m., and they're sleeping, 
then technically it's not murder because he's sleeping. So he's already like in a state of like in between life and death because your body's like half. So, I mean, really at the end of the day, all you did was just help him sleep. So honestly, you know, you're free to go. What loophole? A free man. Even worse, he's reportedly been active on Tinder in recent years as well, making one wonder what he'll do in the name of love next. There's jokes about Iceland being such a peaceful country that they don't even have like a crime watch or investigative branch of government. Um, I don't think they're jokes. Like this dude, clear as day, straight up murdered someone, but because paperwork wasn't filed right somewhere, they're like, all right, get out of here. Like the warning I gave about Dolly Flesh, if you're in the country of Iceland and you have Tinder, just keep that in mind. But moving on, we have rising kayaking star. And you're gonna run Great Falls three years later. Um, that doesn't strike you as uh, overreaching? I wouldn't say overreaching. Um, it would strike me as confident. <laughs> Rising Kayaking Star refers to the 60-minute special done on extreme kayaker Shannon Christie, which would follow her participation. Is she going to die while they're doing a thing on her, while they're doing a 60-minute on her? in an annual kayaking race in the Potomac River. Day one of the bout went off without a hitch, as Shannon had spent the day learning the rapids and getting accustomed to the area. But the following day was much different. Two days before the race was to start, our cameras spotted an empty kayak at the bottom of the falls. It was Shannon Christie's. No one saw it happen, but somehow she had come out of her kayak, been swept over subway and killed. Her body trapped under an avalanche of water. When the film crew arrives at the rapids wow. to film for the day, they immediately find Shannon's kayak flipped upside down floating in the middle of the river. The remainder of the video follows search efforts to try and locate the woman until they eventually locate her body, which was pinned under the water by the force of a waterfall. Sadly, Shannon was no longer alive. Whenever I went on vacation to Niagara Falls, we got to one of the water swells at the bottom of the falls themselves, and the guide said that you can take a life jacket throw it in the water, it'll suck down, and then it won't come up for two weeks. So imagine what would happen at the base of these waterfalls to wow. a person. So this doesn't speak anything against Shannon or her capabilities, just the fact that water and nature is a very powerful force to be reckoned with. And then finally, for the last entry on this tier, we have Mr. Anime. Okay, Mr. The, Anime refers to a YouTube yeah. channel known as Lens Cat Productions, aka Trey Sessler. Sessler was one of the early adopters of YouTube, starting his channel all the way back in 2006. He, along with a few other YouTube channels, became known for posting videos, talking about, and critiquing anime. He's commonly credited with kickstarting the general anime community on the platform. Sessler had a dark side, though, one that became I heard of this? Yeah, hard I've heard to hide of this as one. time went on. While his fame and channel grew, behind the scenes, Sessler had become obsessed with disturbing topics like serial killers and mass shooters. But unlike the true crime fans of today, Sessler seemed to be an active admirer of these figures, even going as far as to make rankings of his favorite mass shooters and serial killers. Eventually, this led to his decision that he would become a mass shooter himself, and for years he loaded up on weapons while studying the methods of the killers that he admired real weapons began to make appearances in his videos, and violence became a more prevalent topic of discussion yep. on his channel. Then, in February of 2012, he announced on YouTube that he would be taking a short break. He would then post an update in March that he had found a job, and that the channel would be slowing down. This is just an update video to let you guys know that uh, I'm going to reward myself with a, probably a two or three week break coming up here from YouTube videos, uh, anime reviews in particular. But what happened next, only Sessler could have seen coming. On March 20th, 2012, Sessler lured his mother into their garage before shooting and killing her. He then entered the house and murdered his brother and father. While it seemed totally random, his reasoning behind this was that he didn't want his family to see what he was about to do next. Sessler planned to become the most infamous mass shooter in history. To do this, he planned to go to a school down the street where a pep rally was set to take place later that day. Oh he would open God. fire in the gymnasium, and if he managed to kill over 70 people there, he would become the worst mass shooter in recorded history. 
Soon after murdering his family, loading up ammunition, and beginning his journey to Waller High, he ultimately backed out at the last second and returned home. He was arrested days later and charged with murder. He currently serves life in prison, and while his YouTube channel was removed last year, three uploads that still exist show a well-liked figure in YouTube history whose dark side unfortunately boiled over. And it's crazy to think that had he not had a change of heart in that final moment, wow. countless others could have lost their lives that day. And while it's of course a great thing that he did not carry out the full intent of this massacre, being able to go back and watch the early signs in combination with the knowledge of the evils that he would one day commit make the entire story incredibly devastating. And like I've talked about with other stories on this tier, it's interesting how YouTube creates an avenue that all forms of people can be watched at any point within their life. That to the effect, even after something as atrocious and horrible as this happens, there's still records for us to go back and look at, with hopefully the knowledge that things learned from the past will be able to help us in the future. But that is all for me, and I want to say again, thank you so much, Nick, for having me on your channel. Um, it really is humbling and it's fantastic. I hope I did an okay job, and I really appreciate it. Once again, I am Wendigoon. Link will maybe be in the description if Nick wants to. I don't know. I don't tell him what to do. Um, but I am Wendigoon. I was glad to be able to go through that tier with you, as dark as it was. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. And Nick, back to you. Thank you so much, Wendigoon, for your kind words. You did an absolutely fantastic job. And same to you, Jorge and Kadaber. I'm so inspired by the work you guys do, and to have you lend your talents to this project honestly means the world to me. I recommend to anyone not subscribed to these channels to do so immediately. I've never heard of Kadaber. To all of their channels in the description below. I've heard of the other two. I haven't heard of Kadaber though. Part one of this iceberg. Part, part one will be coming out sometime within the next two weeks, and things are about to get much, much darker from here. So stay tuned. And I will see you all very soon. Damn, that was only part one? Holy shit. How many tears are there? Wow. It's a great video. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.